I can't believe the Dream World podcast was born over four years ago. I know I've said that before, but it's just mind blowing to me. I'm so inspired by everybody I've met along the way. And now I even raised money to go to Netherlands for the Dream Conference, which is such an accomplishment. So I'm really happy about that and thankful to everybody who donated or plans on donating. So please let me know what kind of content you want to see, what you like, what you don't like. Today's episode is actually a lost file that has been recovered. And it's really interesting because it's about lucid dreaming and memory. I love this topic because a lot of my dreams are some of my most cherished memories that are just as vivid and strong and emotional as my waking life memories. So shout out to my guest Bettina and anybody who is actively researching about lucid dreaming and adding to the literature. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for having me on your podcast. I was actually listening to some of the episodes and they are really interesting. So my name is Bettina and I'm living in Germany. I was originally born in Hungary and I'm currently finishing up my studies in Arden University, which is largely a distance learning based university about my dissertation project. So it's about lucid dreaming and memory reinstatements among frequent lucid dreamers. So basically my hypothesis, my first, so primary hypothesis proposed that when you ask frequent lucid dreamers to try to reinstate waking life memories in comparison to dream memories, they will be way more likely to reinstate waking life memories. And I also had a secondary hypothesis that basically proposed that lucid dreaming skills, which consist of awareness and dream control will be correlated to both of these outcomes that is successful waking life and successful dream memory reinstatements. So basically a theoretical basis was largely based on this continuity approach in consciousness and within that the activation input modulation model. I don't want to really get into details because I don't want to (laughs) bore the audience, but I differentiated between the conscious state of wakefulness and the conscious state of REM sleep and non-REM sleep, so basically dreaming. And I also associated these memories in these cardinal states of consciousness. Think about dream memories that they are way more fragmental, obscure, and our state of consciousness when dreaming is basically primary, so characterized by lack of metacognition, lack of anticipation of future, reflecting your own thought in comparison to state of wakefulness when you have secondary or higher level consciousness. And I was thinking if we put lucid dreamers, ask fragment lucid dreamers, to try to recreate these memories associated with these different states of consciousness, they will be more likely to to access and recreate and have control over their waking life memories. I want to emphasize that this is just really a dissertation and that I really had a small sample size, 17 people. Um, What I ended up finding from my first hypothesis was unfortunately non-significant results. So basically, if you looked at the conditions where participants either succeed in reinstating waking life memory in comparison to dream memory. I found that more of the participants reinstated successfully the waking life memory, which was interesting, uh, but it was not significant. On the other hand, I also found that my lucid dreamers, most of my frequent lucid dreamers reinstated both of the conditions, and there were also a high number of them that could not reinstate any of these conditions, which is interesting because I asked them to assess them on their lucid dreaming scale and it indicated that they were all not only highly frequent lucid dreamers but also very skilled meaning that on average they were they had good skills to not only maintain lucidity but also to control their dream character and dream environment as well yet uh, you know most of them could not really reinstate both of the conditions that was interesting What I also ended up finding was that the correlation between lucid dreaming skills and successful dream memory reinstatements, which I interpreted as if you try to reinstate a dream memory, you might face issues with this obscurity of the dream memory itself. You might require higher lucid dream skills by means of control and awareness to try to reinstate and recreate a a dream memory in comparison to a waking life memory. Yeah, that was also very interesting. I think so, at least. (laughs) Yeah, I I know it sounds a bit complicated, you know, with the theoretical background behind it and everything, because it's largely the relationship between consciousness and lucid dreaming that needs a lot of research. And I actually, I came to this idea for my dissertation by having dream 
I'm not always a dreamer. So I remember my dream storm every night, every day when I wake up. And um, I don't even really need a dream journal. But <laughs> one day I woke up and I was telling my fiance that, oh, I think I had a memory or like kind of a deja vu feeling in my dream. Like I was dreaming. It was a non-Lucy dream. It was just a regular dream that somehow I came to the realization that I had this very dream scheme thing before when I was dreaming. So it was very interesting. I didn't become Lucy, but I remember this feeling of deja vu within my non-Lucy dream when I woke up. And somehow I came to the idea that, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to start reading more about memory and dreams and how our memory is related to dream memory. So yeah, this whole topic of memory and dreaming and consciousness, I came to this whole idea. I sometimes feel like we have a memory bank just for our dream memories. Like I'll have memories within a dream from other dreams or other times within that dream narrative that I've never seen in waking life. That deja vu feeling or deja rev, which means I've dreamt this before is very unsettling sometimes. I, I know what you mean. This is also, also something similar that, that happened to me with this special occasion. I think that uh, I had this specific place and time, you know, the spatial and temporal characteristics of this specific skin before in my dream, but never in the reality. It, it couldn't even be possible because it was very, so unrealistic and everything. <laughs> I'm not really a, a highly frequent lucid dreamer by means that I don't have lucid dreams every week or so. I have them more often lately, but how it started for me, this whole interest uh, in dreaming per se was when I was a child and I had a lot of, lot of recurring nightmares. This specific nightmare actually with this weird girl and they always returned to my dreams to scare me. And I got rid of her by becoming lucid and I looked at her and screamed at her and she disappeared. And this is, I think, my first ever remembered lucid dream. Since then, I also experienced many sleep paralysis when I was a teenager. Yeah, I'm very interested in how we experience this and why do we experience this? More importantly, can we control them? And if we can, how is it related to, to our memories? Is there any difference in our ability or skill to control our dreams based on memory somehow? interesting topics. <laughs> yeah. And in terms of the function of how memory works, short-term memory and long-term memory, I see some parallels as well. Like the process of remembering the dream you had last night is very similar to remembering your day yesterday and what you ate for dinner and so on. And a huge part of lucidity is memory because you have to remember that you're actually asleep and you're not in this weird dream scenario. And the more memory you have of your waking life, the stronger your lucid dream is usually. And I think it would, uh, I mean, in my future, I would definitely put more effort into this area of research, especially about dream memories. Uh, so non-lucid dream memory reinstatement in lucid dreams, because, you know, I'm not the first one who is doing research related to memory, memory reinstatement. Actually, that was, I have to mention the name, Remington Mullet, <laughs> who was, I think, the only person who had a published re research about memory reinstatement. But it was a huge inspiration for my uh, dissertation project because he did a research about waking life memory reinstatement in lucid dreams. And I took this further by asking participants, OK, how about we compare the successful outcomes with dream memory reinstatements and uh, this is what happens. I think it definitely needs more research. So what's next in the research? What experiments do you want to do, assuming, you know, you had the resources and the funding and all that good stuff? I would be definitely interested in measuring the factors of dream consciousness between the two types of memory reinstatements, uh, which means that, you know, uh, memory reinstatements uh, have been associated with certain factors of dream consciousness, such as insight, thought, and dream control, which means that people who, so frequent lucid dreamers who could reinstate a waking life memory, were scoring very high on factors such as dream control, meaning that, of course, they were able to control the dream environment. They were also able to think about what they're going to do as a next step in their dreams, also reflecting on what they should do. Per se, they recalled a specific memory and acted upon it in their dream, try to reconstruct it. So it's a very complex process of what's happening when somebody is dreaming and trying to re 
<laughs> create a whole memory as it was when they were awake or when they were dreaming this memory. It's awesome. And I'm thinking that if we could just dig more into this by comparing how people could report what they experience in insights, thought, dream control, when they try to reinstate different memories in their lucid dreams would be very interesting, I think. And uh, that's what actually I wanted to do, but I need way more participants to do that. And, you know, it's a very difficult uh, area to research due to low population that is fragment lucid dreamers. And yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And even for experienced lucid dreamers, sometimes it's hard to remember the task and execute it properly. So I could see why it's a difficult area of research. Another thing that I'm curious about is if I'm reinstating a memory or recalling a memory from my childhood, for example, in the dream, how accurate is it going to be? Because every time I remember something, it's a little different. And when I'm reinstating it in the dream, it's likely to have some, you know, alterations to it based on however the dream goes. Yeah, that's the problem. We cannot really, you know, objectively access of, okay, somebody is claiming to reinstate a memory, but there's the, there's the weakness of the whole methodology, so to say. I cannot certainly say, okay, that was sure, it was 100% that this person reinstated what he claims to be reinstating. And, and this is a problem, of course, but regardless of less of this. This is a great way of researching this, the memory and its connection to lucid dreaming and consciousness as a whole. I think it's definitely worth looking into it in the future, but I'm just a student. So, <laughs> well, that means something. So give yourself some credit because students pave the way to the future. Thank you so much. It's actually a very complex theory, a you know, theoretical background of why do I think that there would be a difference if I ask participants to reinstate different types of memories. So are you like a fragment lucid dreamer or at least on a monthly basis? Or I have lucid dreams like a few times a week. It depends like how much I'm trying. But I guess I consider myself a natural lucid dreamer since I did have my first lucid dreams as a child. But when I studied psychology and neuroscience in college, I started getting more into it. And that's when it really started to expand and I grew my practice and then started the podcast and it just kind of grew from there. I noticed I started to meditate lately, like, okay, not like seriously meditating. Like, you know, I'm not a pro with that. I didn't read any books about meditation. I just read a few articles why it could be also scientific articles of how mindfulness and, you know, for relates from this whole Tibetan approach and how it could like have share features with lucid dreaming, especially with this awareness and focusing on what's around you without really trying to judge it anyway. And uh, I did that uh, lately. And I noticed that I also had more lucid dreams uh, in the last few weeks, which is amazing, I think. Yeah, it's connected. Um, I use mindfulness meditation as well to help me in my lucid dreams. Um, and it, it would probably help your participants too, because when I practice meditating, um, it helps me stabilize and ground myself. So when I become lucid, I do that and it helps my dreams become longer. So meditation definitely helps. There's a similar mental process there that, that helps you maintain the calmness of, okay, I can, I'm lucid here in my waking life. So then you bring that lucidity into your dream space. Yeah, exactly. So I think I'm going to keep practicing it. And uh, about, yeah, the participants. So I was also like thinking, okay, there might have been a certain fragment lucid dreamers in my research who could not reinstate any of the conditions, you know, in opposition to those who could reinstate either both or one of the conditions. Maybe they just simply do, um, I, I didn't control for practicing it. So basically, I didn't ask them about, okay, do you use like any practice for inducing lucid dreaming? Do you like how long, when did you start it to first lucid dream? So yeah, that would be an interesting idea in the future to control for these kind of factors. It's also an interesting thing of how you start to induce your lucid dreaming. For instance, for me, it's the wild method. So uh, I have to wake up first and then I try to, you know, somehow get back to sleep. And somehow I just, I start to become lucid from first waking up. Do you have a favored a method of inducing lucid dreams? Yeah, so I, I do a lot of wake back to bed like you when I wake up and go back to sleep, um, especially if I do it in the morning, that gives pretty high results for me. Another thing that's powerful for me is if I meditate right before I go to sleep and I set an intention, 
crazy how your mind will listen, you know, just a simple like I will remember I will be lucid that can really have an impact like when I do that. And yeah, sometimes I practice wild as well, but mostly wake back to bed. And it, it's for me, it's mostly just intentional. Like if I really focus and I'm really intentional, like I'll have good results. Oh, you mean intentional, like intentional of becoming lucid or intentional of achieving something in your lucid dreams? Um, Both. Yeah, both. Mostly just becoming lucid. I mean, I usually have a plan because that helps like or at least like a list of things that I want to try recently. Um, I have a long list, but usually in my head, I'll have like four or five things that I immediately want to focus on trying in my dream or work on something, whatever is going on. So, um, yeah, if I'm really trying, I'll, I'll, you know, do a little light my night routine and I'll set some intentions and I'll say affirmations just meant and that really like incubates the idea of becoming lucid yeah there's so many methods really to experiment with it's just trial and error it's also interesting how for some people it comes way more naturally than others you know True. i also had a completely anonymously just mentioning that i had a participant who said that for him or her it's coming so naturally that it's not an intentional thing for it. he's not practicing you know any of these uh inducing methods it's just really natural That's true. I mean, I do have spontaneous sometimes. Honestly, I do. I would consider myself a natural lucid dreamer just because I started as a kid and I don't always need induction methods. Although when I do have consistent methods, I mean, it helps. And I would argue that everybody is a natural lucid dreamer. What matters is, number one, your belief that if you believe you're a natural lucid dreamer, that will have an impact like your brain, whatever you think about yourself, it really does play a role in your experience. So if you believe, oh, I, I can't do this, I'm, I suck at this, that's the experience you'll have. So if you believe you're a natural lucid dreamer, you're great, you know. And, and I think we all are like dreams are a gift that we all can do. It's just practice. You know, it's like saying I'm a natural bodybuilder. Nobody is. You, you got to work out, you know. Yeah. Certainly very interesting how uh, if I compare myself and my fiance, my fiance is a terrible dream. It's the old dream, of course, but we just don't really rem- remember differently, right? I have to say that it was a very interesting talk with you. So I really appreciate your time. And first of all, you know, I send my dissertation and then in the future, I'm going to apply to master, a master degree in cognitive sciences. So I hope that's going to work out. And within that, I can just dig into this topic of consciousness a bit more because I think that's one of the most interesting and complex topics you can research. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.